Yep. Readers, today's lesson is one of appreciation. You're probably asking, what do I mean by that? What do you mean appreciation? What are you getting at? You'll see in a minute. One of the main reasons why I love movies and superheroes in general is because of Batman. Not only was the 1989 movie with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson the first movie I ever saw, but it was also what caused me into getting into comic books in general. So with that knowledge, you'd think it'd be my favorite of the two. <sighs> Fine, four, whatever. Not so, because my favorite, my all-time favorite of the Tim Burton movies is Batman Returns. And let me tell you why. Just coming from directing Everett Scissorhands, Batman Returns was the one Batman film that Tim Burton did where he put his entire foot in. You can visibly see all of his fingerprints all over the motherfucker. And I love it. The interpretation of Gotham City, the fact that it was actually gothic, not saying that the first movie wasn't gothic. And I understand that some people have that argument that why does Gotham look different in this movie than it does in this one? That's because Tim Burton was given full creative control over Batman Returns. Whereas Gotham in the first Batman movie looked like it came off the pages of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. And whereas the title holds reference to Frank Miller comic, The Dark Knight Returns, Batman Returns, that's about the only thing Batman Returns has in common with Frank Miller's work. The way Gotham was designed was beautiful in a way that only Tim Burton could present it. And I really appreciated that. However, it's just not the looks that I love about Batman Returns, it's the story, which some people would say is a bit convoluted, but I was, a, I was able to understand it pretty clearly. Let's start with the villains. The Penguin, brilliantly played by Danny DeVito. You couldn't find a better person for that role. And to this day, in my opinion, his performance as Oswald Cobblepot was the most comic accurate portrayal of the Penguin to date. Second place, the Penguin and Batman the Animated Series after the artist renewal. So when Penguin actually took over the Iceberg Lounge and shit. Not saying that his portrayal in the original seasons of Batman the Animated Series were bad. I am just personally a fan of the Penguin coming from one of the founding families of the city of Gotham. Do you see what I did there? I didn't really think his performance was cartoony. He played into what the character written in that version of the Batman universe needed. And because of it, he made one of the perfect main villains for this movie. And I say main because I don't necessarily count this next character as a villain. More of an antagonist, but not necessarily as a villain. And that would be Selina Kyle played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and actually the main reason why I fell in love with this character. Growing up, I only had the movies and the animated series to reference. I didn't read any of the Batman comic books until the animated series was two years in. So all the villains that I would see in the movies and in the animated series, I thought were brand new. So when I was introduced to this version of Selina Kyle, I thought this was the OG version. And I know a lot of people have problems with the way Selina Kyle was portrayed, more specifically how she gained her Catwoman persona. But then again, that version of Selina Kyle is in the comics, it's just in an Elseworlds comic. And it just so happened to fit Tim Burton's vision at the time, which it worked. Because by the end of the day, despite her origin, she was still true to her character. More specifically, how she is in this specific scene. I just couldn't live with myself. Which brings me to another point why I love this movie so much. The romance between Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle. Guys, this movie is the main reason why this pairing is my main OTP for Bruce, as opposed to Vicki Vale or Talia Al Ghul. It's because we see how Bruce and Selena are versus bats and cats are. And then we find out that they do like each other. And they, at the same time, we find out that they are Batman and Catwoman. Basically, this scene. Oh. 
Oh my god. Does this mean we have to start fighting? You cannot tell me that you do not get emotional watching that scene. It was brilliantly done. The whole, we, can we all take off our masks and shit? That was perfect. Readers, this movie explained to me that Bruce Wayne is pretty fucked up, but at the same time, there's someone else in this universe who is equally as fucked up that clearly belong to each other. But because of things like dual identities and a very weird case of self-respect, they can never be, maybe. Bruce Wayne will always be Batman and he always and he realizes that Batman is always going to be a part of him. It's always Selena Kyle, it's always Catwoman that blends the personalities so perfectly together to the point where he's willing to give up his own he's willing to do this. He's willing to do that. Do you not see? How perfect! Do you not see the level of character development that Catwoman can bring out of Batman? Despite the fact that he has plot armor out the wazoo! Guys, the romance between these two characters are what makes this movie so grittily em... Grittily? So painstakingly emotional to me to the point where outside of that one movie in the animated series that I will eventually get to on this channel, you all know the one. This is concrete evidence as to the potential both Batman has and why Catwoman is his main love interest, in my opinion. Sure, Talia is pretty sweet, and the product of that relationship is Damian Wayne, who was also sweet in a hit girl sort of way. All in all, the story was awesome. The plot is easy to follow. Even when you watch it as a kid, you kind of understand what the Penguin is trying to do while using his birthright as an excuse to be able to proceed with his plan. And it also proves that how detrimental Catwoman is to the progression of Batman's character. She is the only one that is capable of piercing through his armor to allow Bruce Wayne to actually live. That's been proven with Batman Returns, that's been proven with The Dark Knight Rises, and it's constantly proven in story arcs with the two. But then again, these are just my opinions. And like I said, this is a lesson of appreciation. So if you didn't necessarily appreciate Batman Returns before you saw this video, maybe you will now. Maybe you don't. I don't know. As a matter of fact, that's today's homework assignment. Leave in the comments section what you greatly appreciate that other people may not care for. Because like I said in my last video, this is a community. And the main word in community is commune, short for communication, meaning fucking talk to each other. But this has been Readers 101. Class dismissed.